Lords and ladies, welcome back to my street, five years later, with your host, Jacob Butter. I'm just so used to hearing that tune that I know exactly when it stops now. That's probably deeply concerning. Anyways, uh, well met, boys and ladies. Jacob Butter speaking. Welcome to my street five years later. I don't really have an anecdote to tell this time before we start, so I'm just going to go ahead and do my thing before my back decides to give way, or the Wi-Fi does, actually, because both of those things have happened when I've been recording like this. Because, uh, actually, you know what? That, that's my anecdote for today. <laughs> I normally, when I record... I, I tend to slightly hunch over in whatever chair I'm in because, you know, I'm a beanpole and that's what happens. But given that the table is much further down here and it's a significant distance away, I either have to angle it so I'm like that and leaning over to center myself or I'm all the way back here. <laughs> Maybe this time I'll just like lunge back and just reach over every time I need to pause and, and, and play. I don't really know. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about Here in My Arms, and the description is correct. I don't actually know if we're still in song territory or not. I generally can't tell, but we'll see. Oh, hang on. We've got a chat message. Oh, I'm actually here. Yeah, Andromeda is pretty. I'm guessing that, yeah, that's you, pretty players, isn't it? Okay, well, welcome. I'm glad that somebody actually, you know, has an account to speak in. And uh, yeah, in that case, I'm not going to dilly dally any further. So, uh, without further ado, before you all get bored, I suppose, on with the review. This hug has been going on for three days now, technically speaking, because of the upload change. I don't blame them. I would. I would too. You're here. You're actually here in my arms! I've... been dreaming about this moment. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Hey, I mean, you know what? I, I don't blame you, Aaron. I too dream of the moment when I can actually, you know... <laughs> yeah, Leslie, go, go and see Monet. I completely relate to this character at the moment. Um... <laughs> and yes, I see you there. I'm gonna let you in. I was preparing the link at the same time. I was going to be like a surprise. I was like, okay, well, while I'm, while I'm saying words, I'm going to prepare the guest link and send it to you. That was, that was my plan. <laughs> but yeah, you had, you, had to, um, you had to pull a ghosty there. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Besides, I need you for later anyway, if we're going to review the thing we said we're going to review later. Anyways, um, with, that, with that in mind, uh, please uh, welcome the recently let in guest of Aiden DeBest. I... I didn't even mean to rhyme that time, it just happened. Anyways, Aiden. You'd never mean to rhyme, and then you rhyme somehow. <laughs> yeah, so like that yeah, I was about to say that happens all the time, but yeah, that's that's too obvious. Uh <laughs> yeah. Sometimes most of the time it's intentional, but sometimes it's not. Anyway. <laughs> let's yes. keep going. I do. Oh, that's such a good way Aaron. of Okay, wait. <laughs> Camera angle wise. That is a good way to actually visually hide the fact that they switched between um, custom PCs standing still with the heads, with the heads disabled where their heads is, by switching to a shot of Athma moving back, and then switching to a different shot of her holding it. It's just, camera angles like that are really good of hiding ch model changes yeah. like that. Two things. Two things. One, that's a great <laughs> observation. Uh, two, I thought you said Athma for a second there. Uh, yeah, you know what? Uh, moo. Yes. Uh, moo. She a cow now. She a cow. Hey, that that was that, that was a thing in 2015 for some reason. They just everyone called her Af Moo. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Okay, there was that too, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm not doing it was, all it was that. either it, it was either Af Moo my... or Af Mal forever. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so that that kind of reminds me like Wakanda forever. Af Mal forever. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just be like, Waka! And, yeah. Uh, 
Wakanda for forever. <laughs> Wakanda's literally forever. <laughs> if I started doing it properly. Did to you. <sighs> everything that happened. Everything I did to you. It was all my fault. Actually, it was Ian's fault, but... Yeah, <laughs> we both just... thought the same thing. <laughs> that, it was still Ian's fault. I mean, he, he mind control. But... Yeah, yeah. Uh, although, I will say guilt does make sense here, because, you know, you still physically did it. Yeah, if, if, if anything, I cast more blame on, you know, Gareth and Lucinda for letting her go and just let's start attacking Aaron for no reason than I do on her. None of this would have happened to you if it weren't for me. And Ian and Gareth and Lucinda and blah blah blah. I didn't deserve Ian, to be safe. Mostly. <laughs> nope. You have yes. nothing to be sorry for. But I just love the way, just like that. Yep. It's like shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. It was not your fault. Get over it, girl. Come on. It's been a year. Move on already. Trauma is so easy to get over. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. If we're depressed, cheer up. <laughs> That's how the world works. Scars, they hurt. Watch that be taken out of context but now. Not because of how I got them, but because of the words that you were forced to say to me. I'm glad that he specified you were forced to say, because he said the words you said to me, that would be even worse on Aphmau. So he was very yeah. glad that. I would never. I know you would never say those things to me, but what you said was true. I mean, and not it, really. It's more like picking at your insecurities. Yeah, this this is this is a very um this is a very sticks and stones situation. You know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but you know, words <laughs> but... definitely pierce deeper than knives plunge into my chest. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and falling off think... cliffs. You know. Oh yeah. <laughs> a lot about myself. What happened? It wasn't your fault. Unless you're Travis. I'm sorry you had to live with that guilt. All I wanted, after all this time, was just to hold you. Well, there you go. Gold achieved. Series over. Well, thank you everyone for watching. No, I'm kidding. Then, we can do that. For as long as you want. That's About what, three that's days. That's what's gonna happen, happen when you're interacting with Melanie when you meet up in real life. I just, you just are holding each other. Yeah, I mean, you, that, I've, I've said this before, but my street is very relatable to my, to my past, present, and future. So, there you go. Here's to hoping. Yeah. Just to hold you without saying anything. Is that because you don't know what else to say? <laughs> yeah. I'm lost for words. I can't even describe how happy, sad. Hang on. Um, I remember when Aaron covered Aphmau's mouth with his hand to prevent her from telling terrible puns. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it was like no more talking from you. Yes. That is what I like to call top energy. Had emotional. I am right now. <laughs> Same. I'd rather just spend time with you in my arms. Please. Ah, that's the title. There you go. The episode title is relevant to the to the the, the, the first scene. That's a that's a novelty, really. Plus, the Phoenix on High Season Two. One, two, one, two, three, four. Why are we recycling a song? Seriously, this was hey. It's, it's like it's like Jason said. Fast the car was so popular, that it too got a second season. I know, but I don't really care for Fast Car. I mean, I don't mind it, but like. Out my Aphma songs, I would prefer them recycling other songs or coming up with I new think, songs. I think honestly, I think the reason that that we're that that we you know we don't like Barca Cars much anymore is because it's been so overplayed now. Yeah. Like, at the time it made perfect sense. It's kind of like how I reused Lifeline for through her eyes, but that only happened twice. Because it does not appear in yeah. the sec in the third episode. Yeah. Myself, or I could be someone else. No, no one stopping me now. Also, okay, Z skin thing wise, uh, I like Garb's outfit. Like, I know they recycled this design, but inverted some of the colors for, like, I think Garb's 
dad, I believe. Or no, it was a Derek. It was one of them. They had a very similar. I think they used to recycle the same pattern, just changed the hue of it and just gave it a completely different color Possibly. in the art program. But I do actually really like Garth's outfit in the season. Uh, it looks really nice. Yeah. I mean, Garth is described as having clashing colors. So maybe it was for him as well. I don't know. Depends. Although, although I must say that well, I remember that outfit specifically because of Kawaii Kun. But yeah, you go. Oh, yeah. You okay? I wonder if they're okay. I'm sure they're fine. They've been through a lot, but this is just a bump in the road. Oh, I like the strobing. Stop this strobing is just a lights. There's a bump in the road. Wow, Lucinda. Just wow. I agree with Lucinda. Hang on. Wow, Cam. You know, guys, I'm gonna find a different song for this season, but later. To be honest, like if um that like the one I used for Music of Season Two, Paradise, that would work perfectly for this season. Actually, um, well, actually, you know what? It would work perfectly for Love, Love, Paradise. Then Barca Carl could have appeared here, but then it wouldn't have had as iconic an impact. So I don't know. But you have to admit, it might be a little awkward for both of them, especially I've got the this time. Exactly. She's carrying a lot of guilt with her. I'm just. Hoping she's all right. Oh wow, they gave Zane actual lines. <laughs> hey, <Zane. laughs> dang. Yes, because I, I don't know if you were here, Aiden, but last episode, um, when they had like Afmal meet up with the people, um, Zane didn't say a word to her, and neither did she to him. And they're meant to be best friends. And then he just goes off and like, oh, goes to of course feed his cat, and that's like his big thing. So essentially, Kawhi Chen is stealing Afmal from Zane, and. Uh, I'm not sure she's aware that's happening. Uh, well, she doesn't know Kawhi Shan's here. Oh, hello. Yeah, but he hello, hello to the sea system, the sea squad, as <laughs> no one refers to them as actually. I'm, wait, but isn't a squad like four people? How many people is or is a squad oh. unlimited? And, oh, you're, you're thinking of quad because of you know the the prefix quad, but squad can be however many. Yeah, I was about to be like, are you limiting the Caroline system or C system? You're limiting the system. <laughs> never, never say that again. That's fine. <laughs> I won't. I understand you're worried about Aphmau, but... Man, they're gonna use some flare models this episode. It's going to take a while for her to accept that, but... I think that's probably gonna be more of a thing from now on, honestly. <laughs> it's something she has to work through with Aaron. Y yeah. Lucinda is right. I love how Lucinda is so sage about like everyone else's there's love life and like relationships that everyone else is going through, but yet she got cheated on once and decided to like harp on that for the rest of her life. Yeah, Besides, like dang girl, you need to get over time it. Is all we can do for now. Watch. Like I will say, yeah, like I understand that that effect because you know I've been cheated on. I understand that, but you know, I didn't dwell on it for too long, obviously. I bet when they get back, they'll be all lovey-dovey and stuff. Yeah, you guys are right. Besides, this is Starlight! Let's keep those bad vibes in the past, shall we? We'll work through everything together. Yeah, I see Lucinda turning into a little bit of a, a Melissa here as well. So I, I understand the ship here. It's much, less of an opposites attract. It's more of like a equals attract in this instance. Well, yeah. I, like, okay, honestly, I need to make the video where I actually make a video on how, how Malcinda could realistically work and how their dynamic would be. Like, I need to actually make that video because, like, I have that whole video in my mind brewing about, like, talking about how they could relate about being business women, you know, how, mm, yeah, That's how, true. Yeah. how it's all, how, like, uh, how, like, Lucinda's close relationship with, uh, Melissa actually allows her to open up to romantic relationships and like it addresses that flaw of hers like holding on to the past and like she finally feels close enough to someone to be in a romantic relationship with after so much time bonding because melissa will realistically around more yeah to... plus plus they, they but they both play the teasing older sister figure you know they they they, they both they both um playfully threatened violence in the past and they also both come from families that have dealt in potions in the past. So they, yeah. they've they've got they've got a lot to relate to. It's just a, it's, a, it's a pity that Line Gate just completely squanders the possibilities. Yeah, no, like it's ba it's basically just entering a random having a random relationship with two characters that don't even act like themselves. Like if if you're yeah. gonna, if you're going to do a romantic relationship, 
do do one with actual characters because like I mean like I have like a romantic yeah it's just, yeah it's, it's, it's just not as satisfying when the characters just don't act like themselves well I don't uh, wait, 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 wait anyway wait. I need to I need to correct that I accidentally said I have a rela- romantic relationship and I want to do without a romantic relationship in my series with two characters that are written and they're OCs so it makes sense that they would be you know they're not. I'm finishing a thought. I'm sorry. Oh, that. okay. I thought you were. I thought you were trying to like specify for Twitch the sake that you're not talking about real people. Is that, did that, did, no. I just, like, they, they, to Twitch the big <laughs> shipping of real people. I don't think yeah, that's a no. thing. No, I just Otherwise... want to clarify. I do not have a romantic relationship, unfortunately. <laughs> Kawhi can be banned off Twitch in the first. Time <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I I need a romantic relationship. I I need, yeah. I need I need one. Anyways, but yeah, you know, well, you know, like when I go see these characters in general, you gotta keep them in mind when you're right, putting them in a relationship. Yeah, so, another yeah. thing, actually, I just realized something. Kawaii Town would be an amazing Twitch streamer. She could have a baking channel, and she'd get tons of. Well, views I I think channel. I think um Moika is actually someone. Yes, I know that Moika is a Twitch streamer. I'm talking about the character. <laughs> yeah, but like, honestly, you know, I feel I feel like, I mean. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some of Moika's streams. I've seen I've seen some of Kagi's. <laughs> nice. For now, let's go to the and pool and Max. enjoy ourselves. And Max. I'm all about that. I was actually I was actually um Mac and Cheese Please's third super chat. I would have been the first if I actually if my uh, credit card details got approved in yeah. time. I got a question <laughs> though. So, do you like Ghost with the voice filter or without the voice filter? Um, honestly, both. While possessed, uh, while possessing Kim, it makes sense to not have the voice filter because, uh, because I guess with with Ghost before, like no no actual vocal cords physically there would be coming from some sort of some sort of ether. So I get, it makes sense. But yeah, when you actually got Kim to project through, why not take the? Yeah, because I know, I know I know in um season six they actually give her a voice filter like near the end of season six. Eh, yeah. Which I, it's kind of a weird change, so late in the game. Mm. <sighs> I knew I shouldn't have eaten those oysters. Ah, yes. Welcome to what I have to call the beginning of the Flanderization of Garth. <laughs> Wait, okay, that didn't Garth? happen beforehand. I mean, I don't, well, that, well, the thing with flanderization is it takes a trait that a character has, like, one specific thing that makes, like, a one-off or a two-off or something, and then, like, makes it, like, a recurring thing all well, the time. Yeah, I know, I know what flanderization is, but, like, yeah. as, so, like I think, I think already the process, been, I think that the already process been begins. happening with Garth's affectionness, affectionate, and, like, Garth became more affectionate over time. What? No, or... I'm, talking about, I'm talking about him eating, not uh, his, him oh. being a glutton, not, not the affectionate thing. I mean, they kind of flanderized the affectionate thing over time, to be fair. Maybe, I don't know. Because I don't remember that that him being super affectionate, or as affectionate in Season 1. Then over time, that trait started showing up more and more till it became, like, a major rare card thing during Season 3 and Season 4. I don't know, he certainly was fairly affectionate to Infinix Drop High to both Atmo and Lawrence for different reasons, obviously. All the same reasons. I mean, mean, like, I'm talking about in his relation to Zane. During that okay. Part of the okay, maybe, but that's that. Yeah, that's. I don't. I wouldn't call that flanderization. That's like one sort of character relationship that he would have, and it makes yeah. it makes perfect sense. I don't though. I think. I think with yeah, the the glutton thing is definitely more of a flanderization thing than you know. I mean, we don't just... really see much of the gluttonization. I mean, we see it here, and then I remember seeing it during the ball episode of season six but i think that's the only time we get to see that i think it being... happens a few more times after this but we'll see yeah but that's not really much <laughs> but you can just run ahead of us yeah God, run with do those that. rare potion yeah. powered legs back, guys. yeah just make sure you use your bathroom great now i get to deal with that in our room wait he's going to oh no uh I mean, this was this was Zane's idea to keep Kawaii Chan in like the mirror part before. So Why would you think... keep her in a bathroom though for all summer? That's such a bad idea. 
yeah, and uh, like until they can get a ticket, you know, the thing that they spent like a year trying to actually do. You yeah, know? Aaron couldn't even get a ticket for him and uh, for him and Athmel for uh, originally, and that's what spurred him on to get help from others. So you know, yeah. Although to I, be I, honest, Z Zane neglected the very obvious uh, thing that he could have done: just call up Ziana as soon as she hears that it's for a girl. You know, that's it. She'll 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 buy like ten tickets. Doesn't really matter. I gotta go to the bathroom too. Jeez, was something. Oh my weird? gosh! Huh? Oh my gosh! This we get a character What's introduction up? here, huh? or another character reintroduction. <laughs> oh my word! Yeah. Blaze, Whoa, are you ladies okay? How does Blaze consistently have the best entrances to a season? Ugh, yeah. What's your problem, you Kim? Shut up, ghost. Uh, so sorry about that. No, I'd probably yell too. I, also, I honestly... did you like say sorry, ghost? Are you calling me a ghost? No, I'm not a ghost. I'm real. Look at me. That's what yeah. I was on there. I, I don't believe in ghosts. Again, I'm only in a science. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to throw that at two beautiful beach babes. It's okay, just watch where you're going next time. Will do. See you babes around. <laughs> what a jerk. I'm sure it was an accident. Well, Seems yeah, like but you're allowed to yell at someone every once in a while. God. Oh my word. You know what? That actually reminds me of, um, uh, you, you know how I said that parts of the Music Girl Season 1 were inspired by a particular arc from Witch? There's actually a character in um in in, in which uh the called um Rick Fortwood, I think his name was, and he and uh he actually does end up throwing a frisbee at one of the one of the main characters and she, and you know she catches it and then there's like a whole thing between that main character and her clone and how the clone actually is more affectionate towards Rick than she was because she thinks he's a jerk and stuff like that. <laughs> it's kinda of made me think of that because Blaze sort of turned into like the same kind of like attitude there. I don't know. Still got more groove than Dante. Let's be real. Mm. Yeah. It kind of looked familiar, though. Oh, well. Come on. Let's go back to our room. All right. I thought I was hearing the Falcon Call University theme for a second there, but it, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Uh, so I really like Athmel's outfit during this feel season. It looks really nice. For you? Yeah, it is. It, it it is um worth pointing out. Uh, I know people have said this to death, but you know I haven't said it in this particular series yet. So we'll just point it out. Athmel and Aaron colors. decide. To... Thank you, Aiden. They decide to wear each other's favorite colors. That's what happens. There we go. I was gonna make that more of a delivery, but sure. And yes. He is a great character. What an entrance, exactly. <laughs> you, you you know so, somehow Afmal like can can manage to pull off like um boys being extra flirtatious like fifty percent of the time. The other fifty, it's creepy, but somehow it works <laughs> with certain characters. I don't know how. Well, I think it, I think it also comes down to the actor yeah. and the way they perform it, you know. And if if people actually can fall for that kind of performance, you know. I don't because, know necessarily. I, I don't think, know. I think it's more like, the right it, thing. I mean, yeah, but like on a certain level is also based off the performance. I mean, like certain voices just radiate like attractive energy, where it's just like, dang, if someone attractive were to do that to me, I mean, <laughs> hey. That's, you but know, if that's someone something... unattractive were to me do that to me, <laughs> no. <laughs> I think there's actually like a college humor sketch dedicated to just that, actually. Um, but it, it, but actually relating to my streets, it would be interesting to see like you know like have like um the like some of some of Dante's lines being delivered like Zane. I wonder if that would make a huge difference or not, because we know that you know um you know Travis versus um possessed Travis has a very different feel to him. But I I don't know. It kind of does, but maybe that's because. Uh... I'm really nervous right now. Nervous? Why? I was afraid that you wouldn't find me attractive anymore. 
What you just have different ears. So was she. Except for in Aaron's case, it makes sense because he's the one who's changed. That's what I was saying. I don't know. Maybe F Mal was worried she gained weight as well. She's like, oh, actually, I gained I think... five pounds. Oh, wait, oh, no, no. I think she did actually say that. I think she did actually say that she thought she gained weight one by most of what she said before was like, oh, maybe because I'm a human, you won't find me attractive anymore. But there was one time she said that she that she was worried about gaining weight, which I can understand, but ah, he calls you potato. Take the hint. It's fine. <laughs> Why? Oh, why is that face? This. I've never really accepted the sight of me. Even now, I'm still having problems. And after all these years, I've never told you. Uh, Aaron. <laughs> Truth be told, I was afraid of the same thing. Huh? I was afraid that... You wouldn't like me, because I'm a human. Never! I mean, Af, you've always been you. <laughs> That's who I fell in love with. Thank you, Aaron! That's what I was saying the whole time! Well, to be fair, sometimes, like, especially in real life, we have irrational fears. Ir yeah, irrational I, know, I know, I know. And, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna pretend that I don't have those as well. But the thing is that, you know, you know, the, the part of my brain that tells me that stuff as well, like that's equally measured by the fact that I have a huge like sense of logic and I kind of like know what another person would, you know, react to versus, uh, well, some of the time anyway. And other times I'll just like flat out ask the person first. Depends. Yeah. Aaron, I feel the same about you. Please. It doesn't matter when you told me about this. This would have well, you probably should have told her sooner. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, probably I like, I, sooner would have helped. I yeah, mean... I, I feel like there's a moment like there's a moment between when you first meet and you know, ten years down the line when you're dating and moved in together. I think somewhere in between that region of time, I think. Yeah, just just a little bit, just just a chintzy winks bit. <laughs> uh, uh, wouldn't they script for how their character's tone of voice is portrayed for the flirtatious lines? Some of that's really good. What they do again, it could be the actor voices. Um, well, it, it some depends. depends. Like, okay, so in our scripts, sometimes we we specify tone, and sometimes it's just uh, implied tone. You know, with the lines, it depends. Yeah, so yeah, a lot of the time what we do actually, and I, I think this is what Athma does as well because I've heard her VAs talk about this, um, is, is if, if we don't like the deliveries like in any of the takes that the one particular VA has sent us, we'll just say, can you do this one again but do it like this if they haven't got it. A lot of the time what I do when I submit lines is that I take the specific line and I, well, I read the thing that's came before it first to give myself context, but then I'll, I'll do the take yeah. three different times in although three different I ways. Although I will four. say, I don't know if Afmal actually gives some context. Like, I don't, I don't, like, I, I'm pretty sure Afmal doesn't give the VA's context of the lines. She just sends them lines. Yeah, maybe... that's what I, that's what I was getting at, Aiden. The v, her VA's have actually said that she's actually very methodical about, you know, she sends redirections to them quite a lot of the time, actually. So it, I, I, I'm going to guess that that's what her method was. I think you'll find that some people in Gacha scripts, I think Quanti told me this at one point, um, said that um, that I should actually I, I could actually benefit sometimes from doing like saying like in every single line the the emotion that a character is feeling, and then like because some people some people when they read stuff they're tone deaf. Um, I don't know of any of the VAs that I've got right now that are currently tone deaf. They seem to all be do a fairly, a fairly good job yeah. of contextualizing what they say and actually reading what came before it. And if they didn't do that at first, they've learned to do that since. Monet herself said that at one point, that she learned to do that. It just depends. I mean, most of the time people can kind of guess what you mean already because if you actually do proper punctuation, for example, and you actually, you know, if, if it's properly built in, it's fairly apparent what you need to do. It just depends. Sometimes maybe someone will say like, oh yeah, do this like smooth or whatever, but yeah. Usually you're fine. Me away from you. Huh? In the past, present, or future. It doesn't matter when you came and told me this. I'll always love you for you, Aaron. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's definitely what uh, would have been said by her. 
and then no, no, that's what was that's said. All I ever wanted to show you. That's the message I left you on the recorder I sent. Yep. I listened to. I still got the marking as like you know been been like scratched off. I personally would ask for a specific. T um, okay. I mean, I I will say that you know it's like it's like when you when you read something like just you know be it a book a script whatever it might be, like don't don't you get like a sense of like the like the the emotion that's being portrayed. Like in like a character in a book, for example, if you if you if you see something that's like a big like outrage response, it'll probably have like many exclamation marks or something, maybe all caps, you know, maybe like the specific language that's being used in there is it is very it is it's very like quick and somewhat aggressive. If it's like something happier, then you know it depends. I feel like there's there's definitely clues that make it so that people can actually pick up the stuff subconsciously. Like you don't have to realize that you do it a lot of the time. Again, unless it turns out that a person is tone deaf. But again, haven't come across any VAs who have had that issue yet. If I do, we'll see. Do it every night. I haven't forgotten. Then, why would you think I wouldn't want you? I. I don't know. Why were you? Yeah, I mean, he I... almost died for you Sometimes. last season twice. <laughs> yeah, I, I love how like Afmal thinks like, oh, it's so obvious that I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind about this. Meanwhile, there she is again. That's why like the part of your brain that has like processes logic has to also interfere with like the anxiety. I feel like that's a, that's a balance that's like hard to achieve. I'm not saying it's easy or anything, but that's something that's you know, people need to realize in these particular situations. Go back to those moments. This helps me. It gets me through that pain. But it still hurts. Oh, they're doing the thing again. We'll get through this together. There's still some healing that we have to go through. Now that That's why I learned healing magic. Indeed. Yep. And I want to help, Aaron. I want to heal you. Just hearing your voice makes it better. Are you ready to be with me? Imagine if, like... <laughs> He's like, no. Says, no. Imagine if Atmos says that line, and then, like, we, we cut to an angle of, Aaron, of one of Aaron's scars, just go, like... <laughs> just, like, start to seal shut. <laughs> oh, God. Atmos, like, oh, I thought you meant that, like, metaphorically. I didn't realize you meant, like, actually, like, whoa, okay. <laughs> It's like, wow, I wasted Lucinda's this time for seven months. Never mind. I am. Uh, can I? Um. I just realized something. I've had the fan on this whole time. I haven't been able to off. hear it. I haven't been able to hear it. <laughs> there we go. Voice acting tip 101. Don't have fans going on at the same time. I just completely forgot about it. <laughs> Can I give you a kiss? Only if you're ready to start healing with oh, me. Oh no. Oh no. Wait. Huh? No. Don't Is... say it. Don't af mouth. Do not. <laughs> you are... No, stop it. Mm-hmm. What's wrong? This is what I call PTSD. No, 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 no. This moment here. This this here is what I call PTSD. There a certain way werewolves kiss? What? Uh, what do you mean? I want to do it the way that werewolves do. <laughs> is there one? Okay, granted, this is the start of Athna trying to understand Aaron as a werewolf and then failing miserably, so it does tie into her arc. But at the same time, if the people that know what's coming, which is all of us right now, we're kind of, you know, just clenching, just being like, mmm. Granted, it happens next episode. Next episode is called Werewolf Kiss, but there you go. Let's not talk about that. I'm. Which apparently, actually, um, in the Cinema Sins uh, edition of this, apparently, I think Jess came in at one point and said that it wasn't as bad as the original idea of what she had for Werewolves Kissing. Which makes me wonder how, how bad. Worse, how much worse could it possibly how else be? Can, okay, like I mean, the the whole lick thing. Like, is one thing, right? But, like, how can you make that even worse? Yeah, I, I, I genuinely cannot think of anything apart from, like, just fully, like, 
chomping a person or something, which Aaron obviously can't do because I'll ah! Well, wait, actually, what do you think extended things for that to work? Maybe. That was canonically stated. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Remember Fair when enough. he bit, um, oh, crap, Eric? Eric? He bit Eric by accident <laughs> because Eric was trying to get him to bite him because, yes, you Yes, know, yeah, I, I do... I do love the fact that one, like, Eric Plett, like, seen his played for laughs, and Atmos one is played completely straight, but the ultimate objective is the same thing. And yes, it makes me feel awkward. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like Aaron's making the face that all of us want to make right now. I'm really shy about talking about that kind of stuff. I've, I've got to wonder, when did, Ar then when did Aaron learn about werewolf kisses? Because it could have been, like, during his childhood, or it could have been, like, Melissa's, or, like, you know, Derek and Rachel specifically teaching him about his werewolf heritage, like, during this past year. Uh, oh! We don't have to, then! <laughs> Thank we'll Irene. just do it the way we know, then. That's what the fans want. Really. <laughs> Just lean in for Pete's sake. <laughs> There's, they're already dating. There's no point teasing us about this. Only if you're ready. And they're gonna kiss, kiss. There kiss, we go. Kiss, 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 kiss. Oh, kiss. Uh, my shipping heart. Anyways. Yes. Oh, actually, I didn't even pause it for ages. I was just lingering on there. Leave I drink for our shipping hearts and for a normal kiss. Not more human kiss. Uh. I love you, Aaron. I love you too, Af. Okay, that's cute. so much. <laughs> all people really idolize that face in all the edits I've seen. I yeah, I, I can see why you know because I, I think of the idea as like you know you go from like Aaron being this you know big strong mysterious guy to suddenly being like. I'm so much such as a shy puppy in reality, and that's like, oh yeah, you know. He's Wait, did you just compare Aaron to a puppy? Did you just go? Where was our dogs, Jacob? Oh you no! Species? Oh no! I'm going to be cancelled now. I'm <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweet about you. <laughs> well, this is my last year of one, but coming tomorrow, Twitch is gonna ban me. So, um, thank yeah, you. Yeah, get cancelled. <laughs> Try to. Open up more. I'm trying, it's just... Shh. It's okay. One step at a time. Oh, hang on, you got a question. Is my Levi drink just milk or water? Usually it's milk. Sometimes I'll switch out for, like, apple juice or something, or but usually milk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and usually I have popcorn, but so, I have popcorn here, so... Do werewolves like potatoes? Only the stupid ones. <laughs> of course. <Yeah. laughs> That's... <laughs> the fact she didn't catch on until about tw about you know three seconds later just proves his point. Uh, you. <laughs> Can we stay a little longer here, holding each other? Sure. We can go back later. For now, I just want to be here with you. The romance. The romance. <laughs> Yeah, I just realized, by the way, we're like about like, I don't know, maybe in between the halfway and two thirds away of the episode. And most of it has just been Afmau and Aaron. And you know what? I'm all for that. Yeah, they're so, yeah it's so satisfying just to see them interact. Especially after a year. Well, yeah. well like not a year in real life. A year in universe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. How is he outrunning Kara? I'm not. You, you know what? I guess. I guess the adrenaline is a huge motivator. Huh? Zane, you can't use this bathroom. Why not? Dang. We're going to stick it up. So that's what a bathroom is for. Can I just like ask? How come? Like this is. They're in this big, like you know, basically a house in this in this you know expensive resort and they have one bathroom between the pair of them that doesn't feel right to me normally the bathroom's like the first thing you want to like have multiple of in a house 
No, there are. Use the one in the. I know they're not in a house, but it feels like a house. It's as big as a house. No, there are multiple. A lobby! Um, I can't! I find it rude to use it for anything other than number one. It's in the lobby! What? Well, okay, I'm not even gonna go into that. Plus, we have a perfectly fine bathroom right here! So let me throw Zane! No! I gotta go first! Zane! Huh? Zane-kun, what's going on? I, I was going to ask how she could not hear that, but I guess, again, me for ears, tune out nonsense. Quiet, Jan! You need to hide! Where? Zane, that's not fair! I caught this first! I don't know! Come out, or I'm breaking down this door! Just do something! We know he'll do it. We know that's a, that's, a, that's, not, that's not an empty threat. He'll do it. Hey. <laughs> I really had to go. You totally should not go in there. It's a real smelly. And I thought Zane's excuse before was that that guard would stink up the bathroom, and yet yeah, he's now claiming to have stunk up the bathroom. Real smelly? That's what I said! Okay, Zane, you're acting weird. Like, more weird than usual. Oh, crap. He's using his brain! <laughs> I honestly don't care what you did in there! I just I gotta that. go! No, wait! Oh my Irene! And that's one of my favorite Zane quotes, actually. He's using his brain. Yes. Uh, other thing, I have an old speed paint from five years ago on my channel that I'm redrawing while well, I'm smart for an hour on the beach. I find it perfect time to watch the moment again right now. I was just drawing that before. Oh, <laughs> there you go. I guess the five years later bug is catching on to you as well. Doesn't that just go behind all of what Gareth said? That's what a bathroom's for, but it doesn't apply to the one in the lobby. Yep, that's... that's well, fair. I mean, maybe that logic behind that is the fact that it's just like, you know, I, because, like, so many more people use the lobby one, it would be disrespectful yeah. for everyone in the house who has to use the lobby one. You know? Yeah, see, I've, I've got to ask a question now. Uh, this is why it's good to have a guest star sometimes. Um, because a uh, little known fact about me um, it's the fact that I have almost no sense of smell. So most of the time, whenever I'm in a situation, I smell practically nothing. Uh, so my question is, I'm pretty sure that when you go into, into public bathrooms, regardless of like how pristine they might be, you're kind of expecting them to smell a bit, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. But the problem with me is I also lack smell <laughs> most of the time. Oh, okay. Like sometimes I can smell things. But half the time, I can't smell a thing. Yeah, but for, for me, it's got to be, like, very, very intense and very strong. Yeah. Hang on, what on earth is that? Hey, leave me alone, I would say, yeah. Um, Zane, if you made an excuse, like, with that tone, I would know something's up right away. Again, Garth using his brain, so clearly that's, that's what happens. I can explain! Explain what? This bathroom is beautiful! Oh. This implies that in the time that they've been here, Garth has not used this bathroom once. I guess Dang. he must have just gone number one in the lobby so far. Um, yeah, it is. He's so smelly in here. In fact, he smells like bubblegum. Oh, right. I'd love to think that, I, I would imagine like Kawaii-chan with like, you know, like some sort of like Mifa claws that just grew in a second, like just it just pinned on the ceiling. I, uh... You know, you, you know like, like, that actually moves, like, one drop of sweat just, like, peels down from her nose, and Garth is like, huh, where'd that come from? Well, never mind. Do my business. Oh, my, I read, Zane! I can explain! <laughs> mm -hmm. This is such a beautiful mirror stand! I... Uh, wait, what?! I just realized something. Like the, the implication of like um like uh, a human sized mannequin or mifa sized mannequin um holding up a mirror is kind of like one of those like leg lamps. So I wonder like, you know, what kind of people do they think are into Starlight? <laughs> I mean, it's a little weird as a full body figure, but man, yes. this statue has such a nice figure. Oh, oh. you know what? Well, I guess I, mean, I, guess I, mean, I was it's right. It's a compliment towards Kawhi Chan, but like Oh, I guess I was God. onto something there. Clearly. <laughs> All right. What? What does that mean? Look at. What do you think it means, Zane? My reflection. 
you know the irony is here that actually seeing Gareth like you know like put like on Kawaii Chan's body it's kind of like the opposite of seeing Kawaii Chan with Garth's clothes in the mini games. It's like this is like the anti Kawaii Poon. This is Garth Chan. It's so beautiful. It's like my face has this statue's body. Garth Garth views his Garth views his body to be um as more attractive or more beautiful if it was feminine. Hmm. So. I will I will leave that in the air. Happy Pride Month, everyone. That's wow. a weird thing to imagine. <laughs> Don't imagine it! <laughs> Any I thought we got like a Photoshop of Garth. Like, you know how we got like the like the Photoshop of like Reese with like, you know, toned abs and everything, like in the in in like episode two. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to be like it would be amazing if like episode two Four seasons down the line, we just suddenly get Gareth with like a curvaceous, like photoshopped human body. Anyway, Zane, please leave. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, um, okay. I. <gasps> ah! Gareth! The toilet yeah. broke! Wow. W what? How did that happen? I really have oh, to go. Kind of like then go use the one in Lucinda and Kim's room. I'll try to fix. Oh, okay, so they do have multiple... Okay, this! Right. Good idea! Woo! Yep. You can come out now, cool. You know, I would have just said, like, you know, if, if um... If there's, like, multiple bathrooms and stuff, like, normally, I, like, I wouldn't just, like, have stood outside. If Zane had gone through first, which, to be fair, actually did happen a couple times to me and my brother race into the bathroom, but, like, kids. Um, I just would, like, run... I wouldn't wait, I'd run straight to the other one. That's usually what I would do. Why, <laughs> Chan? Smart thinking, Kawaii Chan. Honestly, I'm impressed. Kawaii Chan tried her best not to move. She honestly didn't think he was going to fall for that. Same. Well, he didn't he use his brain thinking. hard enough. No, he, he he exerted himself with the Zane acting weird thing from before. That was that was his quota for the day. There for a moment. I'm just glad that Garth can didn't go. That would have been so awkward. Yeah. Tell me. Also, actually, if he had gone, he might have glanced to the side at the mirror and seen Kawaii Chan's face behind him. <laughs> oh, that would have been even worse. It's like way. Kawaii Chan. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, Kawaii Chan just cut to her, like, fully frozen with, like, a traumatized expression. Keep him out is by breaking the toilet. But you might want to keep the mirror close. You'll need it for cases where he wants to beautify himself up. That shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> Um, Gareth canonically takes six hours to fix his hair, so... Oh god, no! no <laughs> Thank you. Whew. I'm sorry frozen. for making you break me. Huh? There we go. Uh, honestly, Koi, Chan... I mean, honestly, you sh should. You're putting yourself at credible risk, and all because you want to see a ship happen. That's not really justified. I'm sorry, but that's, as much as I love the Zane Chan stuff, like the 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 end does not justify the means, in my opinion. Too much trouble. I don't mind going home. I no, it's all right. I love that. I don't mind going home. I don't mind swimming across the ocean to get back home. Yeah, how did what, you get home? Would you sneak on another plane just to be like, hey, Starlight people, can you fly a suitcase back home and then drop it off at my house? Uh, you know, just, really, just, yeah. just do that. Just do that. I, yeah, I, I really don't know. You're already yeah, too deep question. in. You're too deep in. Huh? You, you went into the deep end. friend. She needs all the support she can get. Even though the way you asked me was... She has all the support she can get, but, you know, character is for people. ...was very rude. I would have brought you if you asked normally, too. Zane! <laughs> You. You're welcome. Now, I'll be back. I need to make sure Gareth. Uh, he, Zane's the one who gets more affectionate super quickly, not Gareth. It's all right. Stay here and don't make a sound. Well, do. Cut to her like crashing down the bathroom or something, and Zane like you know Gareth like yelling like, "What's going down on down there?"
<laughs> this is why you always lock the doors. I knew that was coming. We've seen, we've, we've had like two scenes where one where Lucinda walks in someone else in the shower, and another one when Akma walks in on her in the shower. So this was just naturally going to happen. I wasn't surprised at all. <laughs> Look, Lucinda's seen everyone's stuff. That that's just a thing. <laughs> I mean, well, one time, one time, Lucinda saw, I think, Lawrence's stuff, yeah. And then, but then it was Atma who saw her stuff. That that's that's wait, actually the first time she got. Wait, that, that's that the first mean, time that she means got she's truly got to see boob Cinder. Yeah, no, that was the first <laughs> time. That, that was the first time that Atma said the words boob Cinder. And the only time I think, actually. No, I think that was like she yeah, said it, just, it, just said it in that blooper. In that blooper, she said it, which was before well, that scene happened. Oh no, no. So yeah, what? Well, no. That that I I know what blooper you mean. It's the one where like they changed the character model in Minecraft Diaries, and she goes like, "Why well, didn't I have boobs?" Like that was it. <laughs> I I know what one you mean, but the word. No, it also ha it happened. Her. It also no. She also said boobs in the um in one of the in, during the convention bloopers. You know, they added, they added boobs on Lucinda, and then Afma when saying Lucinda's name said boobs, and then it's like, <laughs> because she oh knows the word. boobs. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> the first time in the series itself of the word yeah. was mentioned. Uh, now everyone's partying. <laughs> That's good. lingering awkwardness. Though. Even so, I know how to describe it. Um, uh, vomiting Princess, where's your Hi, brother? Two .0. <laughs> Probably off with off now somewhere. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did you Wait. send her off to find him? Princess? Yeah. Yes, Aiden, princess. He's called her that before. I'm, again, oh I my knew about that. <laughs> Monet reference? Oh, question whoa. mark. <laughs> Yeah, sure. That will sure we'll go with that, shall we? Relax, Dad. I'm sure that if she got To be fair, Monet can go from like incredibly serious and professional appearing and then, you know, just to suddenly completely Same and drugs. silly. Yes. Drugs. I like yeah, like gobbling utter nonsense. I know. It's kinda of, kind of, so it kinda of reminds me of my dad in that sense, because he has like as I've seen like him yeah, at at his at his work sometimes, and I also saw like um like some of those film like presentations or interviews that he's either done or like he's had done to him, and uh, yeah, when when but then between that person and the person that you see like at home and like on holiday and stuff, like they are just polar opposites. Got lost. She would have called me on her cell phone. You mean this phone? Did she leave it here? Probably on accident, but she did. Maybe she's making out with Aaron or something. <laughs> 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 Melissa, Starlight is huge! The island goes on forever! If she's lost and they don't meet, I'll... Afmo! You'll, you'll, you'll do what? Sniff them out? Th that would be the smart solution, unless they just sniff them. Yeah, use the snooter. Wow, yes. That's a good shot. I like yeah. that shot. Hold on. Yeah. Melissa steals the spotlight of the scene with the personality, in my opinion. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, every time that Atma rewrites the personality of one of her main characters, they end up becoming a fan favorite. It's like she does, if she doesn't nail it the first time, she'll just reinvent the character in her mind until she comes up with something that her audience will like. It's a very interesting idea. Not one that I would want to do myself, but, you know, it did go, it did take us from Surfer Boy Daniel to Small Bean Daniel, so. It, it has its it has its perks. See, told you they found each other. They were probably making out in Melissa. <laughs> now they're werewolf kissing, obviously. Did I say that too loud? Oh, <laughs> I'll just jump in the water now. Aaron, bye, Melissa. Afmo, I'm so. She's not coming back up. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa drowns. Melissa dead on me. <laughs> She didn't even need to be shot by Guardian's forces to almost die. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, Melissa. No, you, you've got your, you've got the script wrong. Your death scene is later. <laughs> so happy to see you two have found each other. How are you? We're fine, Mom. Yeah, no, she's still submerged. Like, she's not come. Yeah, that's it. We just wanted some alone time. <laughs> ha! Told ya. 
Okay, so she heard that under the water. So bear in mind, where Obvious is so refined that she can hear stuff underwater. But Blaze can't hear Kim say, shut up, ghost. Uh. Why don't you two come and sit by the fire? We could all just enjoy the night and talk. Well? I'm all for it. As long as I'm here with you. <laughs> no, I'm stopping me now! See, I'm gonna get my This break. is why Pasta Car gets renewed, because you sing it every time it comes out. I, I can't help it! I exactly. think just what Look, I do when I'm as long as you stay with me, I'm alright. <laughs> Try to escape the cult, you can deny, but you know the result. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, that's it. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Anyways, final thoughts on episode. I liked it. Yep. Uh. Yep. Me too. I'm just glad that Melissa's alive for the time being. Um, <laughs> She's alive, and then she <laughs> dies, but then comes back to life. Basically, Athmal, don't BS me. She got she got tons of holes shot in her. She is she should be dead. <laughs> yeah. Well, th then again, you know, we my street is full of people who should have died multiple oh, times. Yeah, Travis just... should have died. Uh, yes, died during season two. He should, should be dead. Yeah, hey, can, can we just point out that Caitlyn would have been, like, tried for attempted murder in season two? Oh, yeah! Season two, she hit him off a cliff, oof. <laughs> oh, my word. You know something, I've been thinking recently, because uh, I've been, I've been re-watching um, Quinton Reviews as, like, long videos on Nickelodeon sitcoms, um, and, like, how he goes, like, through pretty much, like, every episode um and like you know dissects the the version that people have like victoria specifically he mentions how the victorious fan base have a version of the show in their heads that's not the same as the one that actually aired and it makes me think is that also true for my street because we remember like pretty much everything that happens apart from like a few episodes where you know some details get muddled up but for everyone else they have a very different vision of these characters Maybe because, like, you know, they were younger, or maybe that because, like, there was a there they had the fantasy and didn't want to accept what was going on in front of them. I don't really know, but it makes me think that maybe, considering that I can't do, um, makes me consider that that that, consider that I can't um, use the live streams to get my watch hours up. Maybe like some some super massive videos dissecting the seasons of My Street the same way that Quinton did might be something that is worth looking into i don't know it's it's just a thought i had <laughs> um let's see i really think aaron should be gone back in season four not gonna lie but yes again they need him for law well first of all nice rhyme um secondly um yeah i i, I do agree that you know like the, the cop out of you know divine intervention literal deus ex machina bringing him back Okay, that was to, too much. to be fair, um, in season four, uh, like everything wrong with Jason mentioned that he explicitly wanted divine intervention in there because I guess the original version of that Athmal had in mind didn't have divine intervention and Aaron just somehow barely survived. I actually would prefer that version because we don't actually really see that the knife has been plunged into him at the same time as falling. So if he'd realistically fallen and the cliff wasn't actually as high as it was, because we don't get a good shot of that cliff until Whoa. the episode later, if it actually was turned out it was actually a bit lower, then it could have been that he was in fact barely alive. And I would not have minded that because that feels less like a cop out to me than, you know killing him temporarily and suddenly being like well, oh the... wait no he's he's the secondary main character we have to bring him back to life ah. well i don't mind divine intervention in stories as long as it's i mean i thought it was executed well or at least lore wise it's it, it explains more later because like with yeah connecting with diaries explains it a lot more why irene would go out of her way to save Aaron, not just having it be a random version of irene having it be it just, the irene yeah. from diaries makes sense why she'd want to save Aaron because that's one thing she couldn't do originally. You know, in a way, writing what she viewed as a failure on her end, you know, actually saving the person she loved. I mean, yes. Uh, that, or that, a that version of that person. It just, 
yeah, it just feels horrendously unfair to, like, everyone who's ever lost a loved one in that entire universe before and doesn't get a second chance. And yet, like, everyone in the main cast is, is, seems, to be, uh, seems to be immune to that until Blaze. Well, Irene, yeah. Irene was implied to be problematic um, in season three of of being, uh, of that of of diaries. Are you mean diaries? Yeah, so it, it was implied that she was a very problematic person, which I wouldn't fault. Actually, yeah, the, the demon warlock actually says that as well. That there's a bunch of people that Irene has killed or like let die or stuff like that. Yeah, so the idea of Irene being problematic, matic wouldn't wouldn't be like that far-fetched for her being in a way selfish i mean she she freaking resurrected her friends or copied them or did whatever she did to yeah. reincarnate them for crying out loud i mean in a way that's extremely selfish because like in a way they 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 passed like or her so why why bring copies of her friends back what just so she could live out some slice of life fantasy where all her friends are alive and all her friends are happy and you know you know where she gets to be of Aaron and get this crazy life. I mean, isn't in a way that's extremely selfish. Yeah, that's that. That's why I think that it, they were just done without that whole thing. And I'm glad that you actually discussed that about the video and that there was there was something suspicious. But yeah, honestly, the original version I think would have been far better. I think Jason was, I well, Jason was not on something there actually, in this case. Well. I guess Jess wanted. I guess Jess was planning on it being that high anyway. So at least adding divine intervention again helps it. Well, I mean, I mean, they obviously built the map beforehand, so they knew how high it was before we, the audience, did. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Yeah. It could. It could have made sense. I almost made like an emergency theory after that video came out, like just trying to be like, oh yeah, this is why Aaron Cooklin would not have uh, not have died in this fall, using of course the example of Travis in season two, but. I'm glad I didn't do that video because it would have been debunked in like a day after it came out. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Although one thing I never really got about that scene is how come Aaron didn't try to dive out of the way of Aphma pushing him back and just trying to move to the side away from the cliff? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Maybe he thought that if he struggled that she would fall too back soon or maybe he was too shocked by her words, like he said. They, they, yeah. they pierced deeper. It could have been a mixture of things. I'm not really sure. Anywho, as for this episode, um, I like it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We're just talking about Emerald Secret. There's so much. Okay, here's the thing about Emerald Secret. There's so much to dissect about it, and there's so many ideas. And there are ideas present. You know, ideas to, to talk about. Yeah, I do. I do maintain the fact that the stuff that dissect from Emerald Secret only is the for the last five episodes. That's the stuff that everyone really talks about. So I stand by that at least. But yeah, so for this, but for this episode, oh, hang on. There's um. There's a song called White Castle that perfectly describes Lady about Lady Af my emotions towards the characters in my street. Well, I will listen to that after I stop the stream because I don't want Twitch to take this down. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, but yeah, as for yes, yeah, so this episode, love this one. Honestly, might be even better than the last one, I think. But mostly because we don't have Derek's idiotic plan dragging the quality down. Um, and as, <laughs> oh as, yeah, as, with the whole wolfware thing. <laughs> Not just that, there was more to it. Um, like everything he did in that episode made no sense. Um, but that's honestly not a surprise for him. Anyway, yeah, so this time we were deprived of that. We had actual Afmo and Aaron content, very satisfying to at the end. I mean, I feel like, yeah, it's definitely an absence that makes the heart grow fond of the situation because the people got tired of Afmo and Aaron hogging the whole, like, you know, shipping spot. I don't know it was that Fuzzy Snowing Cloud was talking about a few years ago. Um, well, if anything, Afmal's year um, and to some extent parts of Emerald's secrets, you know, gave people a bit of a break from that. And now we're we're back, we're back in the good stuff, as well as Phoenix Drop High Season Two that did the same thing. You know, Afro and I stole the show at the very end. It's good to use these kind of things sparingly, unlike you know, let's say like the the Gareth eating joke, which comes up more and more. You know, the le the less you use something, the more powerful it actually can be. You can remind people of stuff, obviously, but you know, much like the neutral joke, you gotta use it when you did it. You can't use it all the time, otherwise it loses all power. So, I think yeah, this this is definitely this is going into what I said before about season five being the most balanced out of all of the seasons so far. And of course, you know, we get Blaze back. What can go wrong there? We'll be we'll see more of him and the beach babes at some other time. So I'm happy. 
All right. Now it is time. Um, I think if you want to add anything, I've actually no. got, got to look. I need to look up when the next stream is. Because I forgot to do that again. I think next episode is the introduction to Caitlin and Travis on Starlight. I think. I think the next episode is actually called Werewolf Kiss. I'm not. I. I I'm, I'm not going to yeah, say that. But Next episode yeah. is, I'm, I'm talking about when it is. That's what I'm doing. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. No, but like, yeah, I'm just, I think that's when they, it's revealed that they're on Starlight. Okay. And yes, it was, it was called, it was called Werewolf Kiss. Not Werewolf Kiss, but Werewolf Kiss. And that was, oh, God, it's tomorrow. Okay. We don't, we don't get a break. All right. Yeah. It's tomorrow. So I guess I'll see everyone here tomorrow. Same time, same place. Five, five years, years later. later. Until then, please leave a like or dislike because your opinion matters. matters. And now this is going back on YouTube. I can say this finally. Subscribe if you've not done so already. And on that note, until next time, farewell. farewell.